Hi everyone, so in today's video I'm going to show you how I made this little six pocket tote bag that I just got holding some fabrics. It's actually quite easy to do, so if you want to know how to make this, keep watching. Okay, so I'm going to make the bag again, and this time I'm making it in a different colourway. And to save some time, I've prepared all my fabrics, so I'm just going to run through what you'll need if you want to follow along with this tutorial. So you need two pieces of fabric that are four inches wide by 34 and a half inches long, and these will form the straps of your bag. And basically, you iron them in half then open them up, fold the outsides in and then fold again and press. So these will become the straps, so you need two of those. For the main body of the bag, which also forms part of the lining, you'll need two pieces of fabric which I'm using here in pink. This was the red section on the bag I've just shown you. These two pieces measure 14 and a half inches wide by 20 and a half inches tall and then for the sections that make the pockets you need two pieces of fabric that measure 14 and a half inches wide by 16 and a half inches tall and obviously if you've got a, pa a pattern that's directional like I have here I've got Minnie Mouse and Foxes you need to make sure that your pattern is going in the right direction because you're going to fold these in half and these are going to become the pockets. So you want to make sure your pattern's the right way up. And then finally, you need two pieces of wadding or batting. This just gives the bag a little bit of structure. It doesn't need to be as thick as I'm using here. On the last bag, I used a different type of wadding that was slightly thinner, but this actually squashes down, so this will probably be okay. And these need to be 13 and a half inches wide by 10 and a quarter high. And I'll explain why these are slightly narrower once I get putting all this together. In addition, obviously, to all this, you're going to need your sewing machine. This, I don't think really is a, um, a project that you could do by hand. And obviously you're going to need some threads. <clears throat> and as I say, I've actually prepared all the fabrics to save time. So to get started, you're going to need one of your pieces of batting. You're going to need one of your main pieces of fabric. So this is the fabric that is the biggest piece. And you're going to line them up along the bottom edge. So this is the 20 and a half inches in height and 14 and a half inches wide. And you're going to center this over the batting because your batting is an inch smaller. Now if you want you can make your batting the same width. I just prefer when I'm using especially a batting like this that is quite thick. I like to make my batting an inch smaller and that way I don't have as much bulk when I'm sewing the seams together but that's entirely up to you. So you want to put your batting down first. Put your main big piece of fabric on top, centred over your batting, right side up. Then you need one of your pattern pieces of fabric, which is the 14 and a half by 16 and a half, folded in half, and I've pressed mine already. The more you put into the preparation, the better your project will be at the end. And I'm sorry if the sunlight keeps going in and out. It's a rainy day here, but every now and again the sun comes out and it's a very bright room that I work in and it literally causes me havoc. So that's what you've got so far. And then you need to position your straps. 
but first of all I'm going to do some sewing on the straps. Okay, so the first thing you need to do <clears throat> is sew your straps. Now when I made the red bag I sewed a stitch down both long sides of both straps to seal them together because as I said at the beginning this fabric starts out at four inches wide and you press it in half like so open it out and then fold the insides in and press and then fold in half so you obviously then need to sew this together now with this particular one I'm going to I'm going to do it a little bit different and and I'll I'll explain and it doesn't really matter you just do the easiest way for you but with the red one, as I say, I sewed a line of stitching down both long sides of both handles. But then when you, were come, when you come to attach the handles to the bag, you're sewing over a part of the handle again a second time. So you've either got to be very accurate with your sewing and sew over your original stitch line, or maybe make your second stitch line you know slightly narrower and then you use it as a decorative feature in this particular one what I'm going to do I'm only going to sew a section of the handle first so I've measured from the outer edge of the handle and I've measured up ten and a quarter inches and I've put a little mark with an air erasable pen and I've done the same opposite and then I've done the same from the other end so I've come in ten and a quarter inches made a mark and put another one and then I'm going to do the same on this one I've already done it here so I'm just going to bring in my tape measure line the end of my fabric up on ten and a quarter and just using an air erasable pen this is my scan and cut air erasable pen but anything will do I'm just going to put two little marks and what I'm going to do I'm only going to sew between these marks so I'm going to sew a line of stitching along here and here and the same on this one here and here and anything from here outwards towards the end won't have any stitching on if that makes sense Okay, so I've got my needle moved over as far as I can. If you can't move your needle over, just move your fabric over. And you basically want to sew between the marks that I've just shown you how to make on the strap. And you're going to do that on both sides and leave the ends not sewn at the moment. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see this, but this is how it's looking so far. I've just sewn between these two points. So I'm just going to turn it around and do the same on the other strap on both sides. So I'm just trimming the threads away. That's one. And 
that's the other one. So that's how it's looking now. So I'm bringing in my fabric. I've got my piece of batting, which is at the 13 and a half inches wide. I've got my outer fabric with the right side facing up, which I'm going to line up with the bottom of the batting and center it because the fabric is an inch wider than the batting. And then I'm bringing in my piece of outer fabric, which is going to make my pockets, which I've already folded and pressed in half. And I'm going to line the bottom edge up again. And the fold is at the top. <clears throat> so at the moment, all your raw edges are all lining up at the bottom. Then I'm going to bring in one of my handles and I'm going to position the handle on the bag and then this is where I'm going to sew the rest of the handle closed and this is different to how I did it on the red bag as I say last time I sewed both sides all the way around and then I ended up with double stitches here so I'm just trying this one differently so again I'm going to position the handles so that they're not twisted or anything and I'm going to measure in four and a quarter inches from the outside edge of the fabric and position the edge of the handle against the tape measure. So that's going to go there. You can pin or clip this into place. I'm just going to pin it on the bottom through all the layers. Then I'm just going to bring the handle up straight and put another pin in just near the top. So I'm literally just holding it in place all the way through the back, right through to the batting in two places. And then I'm going to do the same, making sure that the handle's not twisted so it's coming up and around. And then I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to measure four and a quarter inches from the outside edge of the fabric, again, line up your bottom edges and just put a pin in to hold it all in place or you could use clips whichever you prefer So that's how it's looking now and you do that on both pieces so this is this is like your front and your back your, the other piece is here I'm going to do that on both pieces and what you're going to do now you're going to sew from the bottom edge up where you've not already sewn and stop where you did the stitching before which should be 10 and a quarter inches. So you're gonna go up and then across and back down on both sides. So up, across and back down. And that's gonna anchor the handles to, to all, all your layers in place. So again, I've left my needle in the same position as it was when I was sewing the handles. And I'm just gonna sew slowly up, come across and sew down. with the needle in the down position 
I'm going to lift up, turn, put the needle back down, come across to where I meet the stitches from earlier and then come back down and that's going to anchor the handle in place and it's also creating my pockets at the same time. And then I'm going to stop, leave the needle down and come back down the other side. Now obviously my batting is quite thick so this is you know going through quite a bit of padding as I say on the other one I used a low loft batting but I'm just going to wind this on one more stitch by hand that's it and then I'm going to take my time and come down here nice and slow don't need to worry about sewing across the bottom because that will be taken up when you make your bottom seam so that is how it's looking now so I think that's looking a whole lot neater than having the two lines of sewing so I'm going to repeat the same on this one and then do the same on the other half of the bag so that's how it's looking now so it's encased the middle pocket it's stitched up to match the handles and then these will be sewn in when I do the sides. So I'm going to repeat now on the other half of the bag and then we'll be starting to assemble it. Okay, so this is how it's looking now. So now you need to put your two right sides together. Now, as I say, I've used quite a lofty batting on this one. Um, you don't need to use anything, you know, with as much loft as I've got here. I would use something narrower, uh, you know, flatter, but it will work. So you need to line up your bottom edges of your front and back panel and obviously try and line up your handles as well. So if you've you know, got your handles in the right place, everything should line up. And again, you can pin or clip, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to clip this one because there's quite a bit of bulk, but I'll show you what I used on this bag. <clears throat> Was this wadding, which you can see is, you know, really thin. And this one obviously is a lot chunkier. I mean, it does squash down, but um, if you're new to doing anything like this, maybe get the flatter wadding. I'm going to hold all the layers together with clips. And this is another reason why I make my wadding an inch smaller. So that if you are using, you know, something a bit more lofty, you've not got as much bulk, <coughs> excuse me, you've not got as much bulk on your side seams. So I'm just going to line this all up.
And then what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get my air erasable pen again. And along the top of the, my plain fabric here, which as I say, forms part of the outer bag, but it also forms the lining. I'm going to make a mark about six or seven inches wide and I'm not going to sew between those areas that's going to be my turning section so what I'm going to do I'm going to start here sew along come all the way down across the bottom back up and back to here and leave this as an opening So I'm just going to have the needle in the regular middle position. It doesn't matter, you know, about doing a quarter inch seam or anything like that. Just sew with your normal seam that you would, you know, set in its normal position. And I'm just going to back tack at the beginning, come along. When I get near the end, I'm going to stop, leave the needle in the down position, lift up the foot and pivot and then sew all the way around just making sure you've got your edges together and make sure your handles are out of the way so you don't sew them into your bag So this is what you've got so far. So we've got a couple more steps and we're nearly done. I'm just going to push the handles down in there out of the way. So what I'm going to do now is make the boxed corners for the bag. So this section here that gives it a nice flat finish. And I'm going to use a two inch template now. I've cut two inch squares on my scan and cut machine and I just use these as templates. But if you haven't got a scan and cut machine, you're just going to get your tape measure and from your sewn seam, not from the edge of your fabric, from your sewn seam, you're going to measure in two inches and make a mark. And you're going to measure down from your sewn seam two inches and make a mark and basically join up the lines. So I'm just going to use my little two inch template that I've already got. And you're going to do that in all four corners. Because these are going to be cut out in a few minutes. So I'll show you on these two. So I'm going to cut along this line. And up and cut that two inch square away. And you're going to do that on all four corners. So again, I'm going to take my little template. I'm going to line it up to where the sewn seam is on the bottom and the seam on the side. And I'm going to draw myself my two inch square. So I'm going to do exactly the same, cut the corners out. 
I know it looks a bit drastic because you've just spent all your time putting it together and sewing it together, but it, this is what makes your box corners. So that's how you're looking now. You've got two cutouts on the bottom and two cutouts on the top. So we're nearly there. We've just got this last step to do and then we're nearly ready to turn it inside out. So what you're going to do now, I'll show you on the plain side because it might be easier to see. You're going to open up where you've just made that cut and you're going to sew straight across here to make your box corner so line up your seams push your seams in opposite directions so it lies flatter again pin or clip so here's the opening where we're going to turn the bag out through so you're going to bring in this side seam to meet this top seam so you just literally open it out like so and when you pull it together your seams if you've cut your you know your, your square out nice and square your seams will nest and you'll have a nice flat edge and that's creating the boxed bottom of your bag so you're just going to sew across and you're going to repeat on the opposite side obviously you've got more layers here because you've got the pockets of the bag as well so make sure you get in and get all your layers pull these together this is where you're going to wrap in your your batting make sure your seams are all lined up again push them in opposite directions i love these clips these clover wonder clips i think they're called or you can pin but obviously you've got quite a bit of bulk here so make sure you get your fabric all nice and pulled out straight and clip everything together fold your batting round and this is where you're going to catch it in and repeat on the other side so open up make sure you've got all your layers Pull your seams together, push them in opposite directions. I always do the middle bit first and clip. And then once you know these are nice and flat, bring your batting round and put a pin or a clip. So again, I'm just lining the edge of the presser foot up with the edge of my fabric I'm going to do a few stitches and back tack and then come along and back tack at this end just to hold it all in place so that's how it's looking I'm going to repeat that on all the other three. Obviously, if you've got a walking foot, you could put a walking foot on at this stage, but you should be okay, as I say, because the batting will flatten down. Keep your other side out of the way here. I'm going to take one of the clips out and hold this batting in place with my hand. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set off sewing. I'm going to do some back stitches. When I get near my next clip, I'm going to take that out. Keep my seams nice and flat. Obviously, you've got quite a bit of bulk here, so take your time. Nice and slow. If your batting moves, stop and push it under your foot. Thank you. 
you know it can be done it's all sewn in last one to do check it from both sides make sure all your seams are caught in if you're in any doubt just put it back under and run another seam but you should be fine so what I'm going to do now trim off some of these threads I'm going to put my hand in the opening find the bottom of the bag and start to pull it out through this opening now take your time because obviously you know you will have quite a bit of layers here but it will come through that opening if you've left it big enough <clears throat> Just push it all through and it's like magic when it appears push out put your hand in and push out your box corners where you've just made your corner I think I've made a bigger box corner on this one yeah on this one I think I used an inch and a half square cut out on this one I've, I've done two inches so it'll just probably make my bag slightly narrower but it will be wider but it doesn't matter you know it's all individual push out your corners on your lining and then what you're going to do now is sew up the lining so if you get hold of your box corners and pull it together your lining will start to want to fold in so if you put your fingers in the opening and then your fabric will fold in. Now you can hand sew this, but because it's going to be the bottom of the lining, you're not going to see it in the bag. So I'm just going to pull it, finger press it and sew it on the machine. So I'm literally going to put this back under the machine and I'm going to, I can see where my bag is sealed. I'm going to come on where it's sealed and sew very close to the edge and sew off just to seal up that gap. And this time I am literally just going to sew right on the edge. I'm not, I'm not lining the press a foot up to the edge of the fabric as I've been doing on the rest of the bag because I literally just want to sew this little seam up. I'm going to start and back tap, sew along, tape my clips out, can see that my bag is open to this point here so I'm going to sew along to that point just back tap and then just sew off trim my thread and then I'm just going to push this inside the bag And flatten out the boxed corners inside and what you should be left with is your lining will roll over where your wadding is so this is how it's looking and then I am going to top stitch all the way around as I did here on this one. So I'm going to flatten the bag out and I'm going to put some pins in it or some clips just to hold it in place. Doesn't need many.
I'm going to start at the side seam and I'm just going to sew as close as I can all the way around the top, all the way around. So I can remove the bed of my machine, which exposes the free arm. Let's move all my bits of thread out of the way. I'm going to slide this under. And again, I'm going to line the edge of my presser foot up with the edge of my fabric and I'm going to move my needle as far over as I can. If you can't move your needle, just put your fabric, you know, so that your needle is near the edge. Whatever works for you. And I'm just going to start just at this side seam. When I get to where the handle is, I'm going to go over that section as well. You can move it out of the way if you want and sew or sew the handle down. I think I sewed the handle down on the last one, so I'm going to do the same with this. So I'm literally just going to sew right over it. And I'm going to keep stopping and turning and taking my time and going round. And there it is, all completely finished. All sewn in, finished off all around the top. This one, if you look at it compared to this one, looks a little bigger actually. And that's probably because I've got a bigger bottom here so it's made it slightly taller, but it's the same fabric range in the same size this one's just got a bigger bottom than this one so the red and white one i used one and a half inch squares cut out in the four corners and the pink one with the mini mouse i used two inch squares cut out in the corners to give me a bigger base but it's the same bag lovely spacious inside it's lovely and squishy and padded and it's got six pockets so three on the front and three on the back so I'm going to give it a quick press and I think it looks fab. I mean, you could do this without putting the handles on and just make, you know, something to sit on your desk and put cards or pens or whatever you want in. It can be used for anything really, but I love it. So I hope you like that project. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.